What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about a dinosaur that was first introduced to us in the original Jurassic Park movie, but wound up never making a physical appearance in any form of media in the live action franchise. Now that's not to say that there wasn't plans for that to happen, because in truth, the animal was actually driven back into extinction on Isla Nublar by some of the more powerful carnivores on the island, which I've got a whole video on from a few years back. Still, this is a dinosaur that I think would make for one seriously cool antagonist in a story set before it died out, and something that we know was present on Isla Nublar during the 90s and in the early days of Jurassic Park. So Metriacanthosaurus is a dinosaur that was seen briefly displayed on the embryo storage while Dennis Nedry was stealing assets from the park in the first film. It's also visibly seen in the brochure for Jurassic Park and is a dinosaur that has made a few appearances here and there, but never a physical one in any of the actual movies. The animal was a late Jurassic carnivore that weighed around a ton and gets its name from the height of the dinosaur spines, which are kind of like what you find in Ceratosaurus, which was shown briefly in Jurassic Park 3. So it's not exactly like an acrocanthosaur kind of thing, but back when it was named, it was pronounced enough to make a difference. As far as live action movies go, we have never seen a Metriacanthosaurus in the flesh. And that's because this dinosaur is kind of one of the most cryptic and secretive creatures in the brand. There are others from even back during the 1993 days that still haven't shown up either, but this is the biggest one and also the most secretive one of the bunch in relation to carnivores and how they may have behaved on the island. It's the coolest secret big carnivore we never saw in a movie. The dinosaur isn't really talked about by many people in the fandom at all, and when it is brought up, it's kind of funny because it's this self-fulfilling prophecy of, yeah, nobody really knows much about it, so we don't really include it in conversations at all. When it comes to mysterious dinosaurs within the franchise, I'm telling you, this is definitely towards the top of that list. Now, back in the day, there was a book you could buy from Jurassic Park Institute which featured some info on the Metriacanthosaurus specifically and even had this really cool render of a red animal with slightly pronounced spines that they used to show it off. In the book, they state that the name comes up on the list of embryos stored in refrigeration like I mentioned earlier, but that may be due to the fact that for a short period of time in the mid-1980s, a paleontologist considered the much better known Yangchuanosaurus to be a species of Metriacanthosaurus. The animal in the fossil record was originally thought to be a new species of megalosaur before another paleontologist decided that the bones were too different to that animal, which is what eventually led to a new name. Even today, we know very little about the dinosaur, and all we really know for certain is that it was a distinct creature in relation to other carnivores. It's nowhere near as big as T-Rex, but it is still dangerous, and something that I think would make for a pretty cool attack scene where we could see some unique attributes and abilities all its own. It could have been about 23 feet long and maybe even six feet tall at the hips, which lends itself for some different action scenes in regards to what we've seen before from dinosaurs. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about Metriacanthosaurus in relation to the Jurassic Park brand is specifically due to its lack of inclusion in any previous movie, but with an actual footing in the lore that could help bring something new to the series. But again, that's only if the filmmakers wanted to do something proper and right by the name that would help revitalize this animal and even help bring more attention to it in a big way, as well as the franchise as a whole. What I mean by this is sort of just using the available tools that they have to craft a story that would both be fresh as well as welcome to the canon in a meaningful way. But first and foremost, it also, look guys, it has to be cool. After going back over the old school time frame where I became a Jurassic Park fan, I will say that I totally believe that there is just something fundamentally right with how Jurassic Park and the Lost World treated dinosaurs, as well as dinosaur behaviors and environments that I think was really entertaining. And I don't even just mean that on like a movie level or a paleontology fan level. I think it's just something that is literally cool about those two movies and how they approach the subject matter that I really liked. And when it comes to introducing new dinosaurs and having fun with that idea in canon, I think Metriacanthosaurus is the prime candidate for something like that. That's why I think the idea of a Jurassic Park prequel set sometime after the events of the first movie, but still before something 
something like Jurassic World, maybe even before The Lost World, would be the perfect time to set a story where the Metriacanthosaurus is a new villain dinosaur. This could even build upon the lore of the old park and showcase something new that we haven't seen before without forcing the T-Rex to lose another fight to a different theropod. And if you want to be really cool, you could even showcase this dinosaur engaging in some sort of territorial dispute with other similarly sized carnivores. Maybe something like a full-grown Dilophosaurus with venom spitting abilities or even the camouflaging Carnotaurus from the novel to help give it that Crichton science fiction vibe. Whatever they do, I just hope that if they plan on introducing this dinosaur in the future, it be done with a really good sense of both the source material and science on the animal as a whole. But I will also say that I really don't want to see the dinosaur make its debut if it's just going to be in a very goofy or brief way like what they did with the Ceratosaurus in Jurassic Park 3. I still wish they'd given that animal something to do in a newer story instead of just show up once and look at the screen. Carnotaurus from Fallen Kingdom was actually given some sort of resonating sequences that didn't always work in its favor, showing it to be some sort of all-powerful creature or anything, but what we did get, I, I kind of liked, and I'd go as far to say that as a design, it's my third favorite favorite carnivore in the series by far. It's right behind Tyrannosaurus and Velociraptor. Carnotaurus from Fallen Kingdom, man, it's a pretty solid dino design in my opinion. So for Metriacanthosaurus' sake, the cryptic animal that we've never seen, but always heard of in the franchise, I'd love for them to make something dark, scary, and fun in relation to science fiction, paleontology, and just overall coolness when it comes to the brand. If they were to ever go back to the days of what got us all excited for movies and books like Jurassic Park and The Lost world, I'd love to see you know, this thing brought into the fold. It's a dinosaur that's dark, interesting, and even in the paleontological landscape, we really don't know much about it. So you could even add some sort of Yangchuanosaurus or Megalosaur disputes in the actual cloning process for its story. Make something that's set after Jurassic Park, obviously, because a prequel set before the movie, you can't have dinosaurs really without it being sort of forced. I mean, you could, but nobody could get hurt because Joffrey was like the first guy to get killed. And that was what led to the inspection of the park. Metriacanthosaurus could very well be brought into the franchise and they could have carte de blanche to do whatever they wanted with it because we really know so little. It wouldn't be a bigger animal than the Rex and it would be fun to explore. But hey, those are all just my own thoughts on the subject matter. What do you guys think? Would you like to see Metriacanthosaurus brought into the live action movies or do you think it needs to stay out of the films and remain a secretive cryptic animal? I've given my thoughts but hey, whatever your own opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens and engine executives, as well as all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. You've all helped my channel immensely and I'm incredibly grateful for all of that support. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you all consider subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video guys and as always, take it easy.